What is up, guys? This is the awesome.com night shift. This is your host, Jake Hari, here to break down the Thursday, April 26th slates. We got two slates to talk about a five game early slate and a four game main slate at night. Um, get your premium membership to awesome.com today. You get access to all of Osmo's rankings and all of our articles and our streaming. Um, live streams. I do the early show with Josh Engelman, um, and we've got a lot of good content to give to you guys, and especially to the premium members. So get on that as soon as possible. Uh, we're gonna go through this game pretty quick. There's only nine games, or this this slate pretty quick. Both of them, only nine games to talk about. So I'll just run through quickly what I'm looking at here. The early slate starts at 12.35 Eastern, and that the last start time for the early slate is 1.15 Eastern. So all these games start within a 40-minute window. There's five of them. Um, so hopefully you'll have your cash in your account by the time the main slate gets started. That would be ideal. So I like this little early slate. Start with Atlanta versus Cincinnati. We got Sean Newcomb here against this underwhelming Reds team. The only guy that I'm really scared of for Newcomb, and he's 8700 so it's not a great price, but the only guy I'm really scared of is Adam Duvall. And outside of that, like Newcomb can get all these guys out. The Reds have a 4.3 run total, and Homer Bailey's on the mound, so he should be able to get some run support. So I do have some interest in Newcomb. It's not a great price, again, but I do think Newcomb has a chance to be a pretty good pitcher. He does get in a lot of trouble with walks. So risky option, but for 8,700, I think he's all right. Homer Bailey on the other side, 57% hard contact against right-handed bats this season. He's bottom 15 in the MLB in whiffs per swing this year. Just seems like a terrible matchup here uh, for against both the righties and the lefties. So Atlanta bats that I like, and the stack's going to be popular, but I do like um, I do like Freddie Freeman, of course, for 5,300. Ozzy Albies for 4,600. Nick Markakis for 3,700 is fine. Preston Tucker, if he goes, and then Kurt Suzuki for 3,800 is also really interesting. If Tucker's not in the lineup, it might be Ronald Acuna, and he's 3,700 big Braves prospect. Everyone was excited about him on Twitter yesterday. So for 3,700 here against Homer Bailey, who is getting crushed by righties, I think that that's a perfectly reasonable option. All right. So I love the Braves stack. Everyone's going to love the Braves stack on this early slate. It's against Homer Bailey. So no interest in Homer Bailey, but um, Braves bats will be popular, but I can't really argue with it. Detroit and Pittsburgh. Michael Fulmer is a guy that I don't really want to play here. He's 6,900. It's against the Pirates. I do have some respect for a bunch of these Pirates hitters. Frazier, Polanco, Bell, Dickerson, all going to be tough outs for Fulmer. I don't think I'm l looking to play Fulmer here, even for that cheap price in a pretty decent ballpark. So the Pittsburgh bats that I want to target against him are Dickerson, Colin Moran. I always mention him, but if he's in the lineup and somewhere in the top six, Makes for a nice punt at third base for 2,900. Gregory Polanco is another guy that I like a little bit. Um, batting second, under 4K on DraftKings. And then Adam Frazier with dual position eligibility for 3,200 if he is leading off. Ivan Nova going for Pittsburgh. He's always had really big splits. And it's a small sample this year, but he's striking out lefties under 10% this year. And almost 30%. Um, for righties so obviously not gonna strike out righties at a 30 percent clip but the splits are definitely there once again this year he's gonna see six to seven maybe even eight righties here eh, probably seven righties here but um man i think that nova makes for a fine play for eight thousand i don't love that price i don't love paying for no uh for nova if he's gonna be popular which I think he might be a little bit popular, but it's just a good matchup for him overall. A bunch of righties 
in a pitcher's park, decent weather. It looks like it's going to be about 55 degrees, so not the greatest hitting weather, not the greatest pitching weather either, but man, it just seems like Nova could have a pretty nice outing here. And maybe for Detroit bats, if you want to target against Nova, it would be Candelario. And then I always consider Miguel Cabrera and Nick Castellanos. They just hit both hands very well. And it's not like Nova isn't susceptible to some hard contact at times. So shockingly, some interest in Ivan Nova. And um, that scares me. Twins, Yankees. We've got some wind blowing out here. It's 63 degrees, it looks like, right now. But this is hours before the game actually gets started so things could change keep an eye on the weather if it's blowing out yankee stadium already a really good park the yankees have a 5.6 run total gibson is striking out right he's at a 22 percent clip which is solid but he's also giving up 37 percent hard contact to them and we know the yankees have a lot of righty power um i don't know if you, you guys have probably heard of aaron judge and john carlos stanton and Gary Sanchez, those guys are pretty good. They can hit most pitches. They do have trouble with sliders. Gibson does have a decent slider, it looks like. So he could have some success here. I, I don't want to play Gibson, not with the wind blowing out. If this was in a pitcher's a pitcher-friendly park, then I think I might have some interest in Gibson. But it could go really bad really quick if that slider is not breaking as much as it needs to. And if he's not getting ahead of Yankees, he's going to get crushed here. So the Yankees bats, I like, I mean, I like the entire stack, but it's mainly Judge Stanton and Sanchez for me. Um, if you can get in an Aaron Hicks, then by all means, go for Aaron Hicks. Miguel Andujar at 3,900 batting towards the end of the lineup. He'll be lowish owned, but he's been raking lately. There are... Man, you could go really one through seven or one through eight with this Yankees lineup against Gibson. Um, man, that's a huge team total. The Yankees should be chalk here. Um, so going down to the bottom of the lineup with Hicks, with Miguel Andihar, seems like a pretty decent option to me in addition to getting guys like Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Judge and Gary Sanchez. You can, of course, go to Brett Gardner leading off for 3900 He just never gets priced up. And, man, th this looks like it could go south for Gibson really, really quickly. Jordan Montgomery pitching for the Yankees. He's got an under 20% K rate against both righties and lefties this year. But he's got a 10.9 swinging strike rate. I think he's got some positive regression coming his way as far as strikeouts go. So I do like Montgomery here for 7,800. I think he gets decent run support. And... Really, the only Twins bat that I'm looking at is Brian Dozier. Miguel Sano is striking out at a crazy rate right now. And he can't hit a beach ball, it seems, at points. And Montgomery, a good pitcher, 7,800. Sign me up for some of that. Arizona and Philadelphia. Uh, Matt Cook pitching um, I'm for Arizona. I'm not really buying him. Um, but I don't really love to tar like you know the bats you could target on Philadelphia it's mainly Reese Hoskins and then Nick Williams for 2900 on DK makes for a nice play as well um lively for Philadelphia he's been really good against righties not really good against lefties um just to sort of sum it up that way he's not the worst option here I don't think 4,900, he's a favorite going up against Arizona where the bats that you're most worried about are Paul Goldschmidt and A.J. Pollock. So I actually do have some interest in Lively here. I need to check on his pitch count and, and stuff like that, see how deep he's been going in terms of number of pitches. But it looks like he could be okay here, for especially for 4,900. That's, that's a really good price for a favored starting pitcher, and I don't think he'll go under owns so playing a chalky lively scares me but he does allow you to get it in a guy that i really want that i'll talk about next game and this is the last game of the early slate mets cardinals um noah Syndergaard. he's the best pitcher on the slate and he's gonna get a bunch of righty bats here just the highest upside on the slate and 
I really want to play him here for 11-6. He has not had the greatest results, but I think some of the underlying stuff suggests that he should be getting better results than he is. I prefer him over Carlos Martinez for around the same price on DraftKings. Um, the St. Louis Bats, I wouldn't get cute here, but I guess you could go to a Matt Carpenter on a short slate if you want to get a leverage bat and you're not playing center guard. Martinez has a 37.8% hard contact rate um, on the year with only one start that was under 36%. So he's not a 30% K rate guy like he's been against lefties. Um, but that's what he's been doing right now in terms of the results. So I actually prefer some Mets bats here instead of playing Carlos Martinez, as, as weird as that sounds. So I actually can make a case for a Mets stack with Michael Conforto, um, Estrubal Cabrera if he's in, but now I'm seeing a questionable tag next to his name so i'm not sure what's going on with him if he's going to be in the lineup or what but if he's in the lineup then i really like him for 3900 must have missed some news there jay bruce for 3400 is a really nice play as well and then yoana cespedes so it'd really be those top four for the mets that i like not a real big fan of carlos martinez on this slate I much much prefer noah Syndergaard on this early slate all right, for the main, uh, Seattle and Cleveland is not on the main slate for DraftKings. I'm assuming it's not for FanDuel any, um, either, but you can hit me up on Twitter. You can DM me or whatever at Kari on Twitter if you want um, some analysis on that game for whatever reason, but I'll skip over that just to keep this quick and concise. Tampa Bay at Baltimore. I don't really have interest in the bats here outside of maybe a Machado one-off or something like that, but Archer and Bundy are both priced in places where I, I'm i comfortable playing both or either one of them. So it's a little tough with Chris Sale on the slate and it only being four games, so you're probably going to need the highest raw points pitcher on the slate, which makes Sale a really dangerous fade. But Bundy is seventh in wisp per swing this year, wisp per swing percentage this year. He's just been really, really good. He looks like he's taken the next step. He's been good against lefties, but, I mean, at times I'm sure he's going to struggle against them. But this Rays lineup really looks pretty awful on paper. You got Carlos Gomez, CJ Cron against a righty. Uh, Brad Miller is fine, but not a guy that I'm not going to play a pitcher against. Malik Smith, Wilson Ramos. I mean... There's just not a lot to be scared of for Bundy's matchup. I think he's got the highest upside outside of Chris Sale on this on this um, four-game late slate. But, um, yeah, I really like Bundy. And let me talk about Archer quick. It's, it's similar to Bundy, but he hasn't really been quite getting the whiffs that we're accustomed to. I think he's still a really good target against the Orioles, who are one of the most impatient teams. And Archer does get in trouble with walks sometimes, gets a little bit wild, loses command. Um, so it seems like a pretty good matchup against a, a Baltimore team that is not patient at all. Um, yeah, I, I love Archer for 8,800 here. And I don't really see bats outside of Machado that I want to play for Baltimore. So both pitchers here, not really looking at bats all that much. I'm sure me and Josh will talk about this a little bit more on the early slate and then on the live stream as well. Live stream on Thursday night. Boston and Toronto. We've got Chris Sale striking out righties at a 36.5% rate this year. Under 27% hard contact. Just really awesome numbers for lefty against righties. Um, you, I mean, the price is really the only thing that's going to get you off of sale here i was on eduardo rodriguez wednesday and so of course i'm going to be on sale obviously the price is a little bit different we had fourteen thousand dollar kershaw now we have thirteen thousand dollar sale it's not a great matchup against all these righties for toronto but with a guy as elite as sale is you don't really have to worry about matchups all that much um especially on a slate this small. Like, he's just got such a good chance to be the highest raw point scorer 
maybe Bundy, I think, could um, could get there in terms of the, like, he could outscore Sale. But, man, Sale looks like he's in another okay spot. It looks like he could strike out seven, eight guys, maybe more in six, seven, eight innings. Who knows? Like, I do like Sale a ton. It's just the price that could possibly keep me off him, but more analysis to come on him. As the day goes on, we'll see where he ranks in Osimo's ranks. Um, but everything looks like a go for him. Marco Estrada, no interest in him. I do like a Red Sox stack with Mookie Betts, J.D. Martinez, Hanley Ramirez, Devers, um, Bradley. If Bradley's batting anywhere in the top seven, I like him. Um, yeah, Benintendi, like really one through seven with... The Red Sox are all in play. Um, I don't. I don't know what else to say about that besides um, Red Sox are a really good stack. They're going to be chalky, so we don't really need to talk too much about them here. Milwaukee and Chicago. We've got Chase Anderson priced at sixty six hundred. Kyle Hendricks at sixty nine hundred. That is a little bit surprising. Um. So Anderson, I mean. Not a lot of interest in him against the Cubs here. Over 40% hard contact against righties this year and a 15% K rate against them. So I think um, if Chris Bryan is back, and I don't know if he will be, um, he would be interesting. I, I don't know Chris Bryan's status, but I want to target righties here. Wilson Contreras, one of my favorite catcher plays on this slate um, where there aren't many catcher plays. So I do like the righties. Anthony Rizzo, if he's in the lineup for 4,400, and he should be in the lineup pretty much every day that he can be, that would be another guy I'm interested in. Not really digging $4,700 Javi Baez against a righty, but in terms of a stack, I think it's fine. Hendricks, um, when I first looked at this, I the DK pricing wasn't out, but seeing him at 6,900, He's a guy who does a pretty good job at limiting hard contact. We do know the Brewers have some strikeouts in their lineup with um, VR, Aguilar, um, Shaw strikes out a decent clip. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think you can definitely make a case for Hendricks, and he, he might be chalky, so that sort of makes me want to go up against him with some bats. Uh, Christian Yelich, I love. Travis Shaw, and then... Lorenzo Cain has some stolen base upside. Um, Hendricks is pretty bad at holding on runners, always has been. And not much is going to change there. So these Brewers are priced pretty high. Um, Cain, Yelich, Braun, and Shaw all over 4000 So I think a stack makes sense, but I can also make a case for Hendricks. He's not a guy that usually gets blown up. So I could see him going five or six innings here, like... I could also see him going five or six innings, giving up four or five runs too. Um, I'm just not really sure what to do with Hendricks at this point because I like both sides of it just because of the price point with Kyle Hendricks. Don't usually like him, like playing him in DFS. All right, let's go to the last game of this early or this main slate. We've got Lucas Giolito getting hit pretty hard by lefties. Um, I'm guessing that's going to continue from what I've seen. So for the Royals, I do really like Mike Moustakis and Lucas Duda. It's kind of the same thing as Wednesday's slate when we were on these two guys, me and Josh, during the morning show. Jorge Soler at 3,400. He has been hitting lefties really hard, but I'm willing to take a shot on him at 3,400 here, even against a righty, just hitting the ball really, really hard. So... I'll take a shot on him at low ownership on a um, four-game slate and just hope he gets a lefty at some point. That would be ideal, but either way, I, th I think he's fine. And no interest in Giolito for me. For Jake Junis, I like him a little bit here. I was hoping he'd be priced down a little bit lower near Hendricks, but I think he'll be a little under-owned for that reason. So he's played the Tigers twice, then the Angels, and then the Mariners, and he's got a 9.7% swinging strike rate. This year, those three teams, the Tigers, Angels, and Mariners, are all in the bottom 10 in K percentage against righties. Um, 
and the Angels and Tigers are sixth and seventh in hard contact percentage against righties. Junis has survived pretty nicely in those four starts, and the White Sox are 12th in K percentage against righties this year. It's a good ballpark for Junis. It's not a great price, but $8,300, I think he's right behind Archer and Bundy, that tier. So Chris Sale would probably be a tier by himself. Then Bundy and Archer and then Junis right behind them. So I think DK got the pricing right. I was hoping they wouldn't. I was hoping Junis would be around 7000 because then he would be my, my SP2 pretty clearly. But there are four guys um, that I'm considering. Well, really five. So Sale... Archer, Bundy, Hendricks, and then Junis. So should be an interesting pitching slate. As far as the White Sox bats go, really the only guy that I, that I like for a matchup against Jake Junis is Yohan Mancada for 4,400. Just he's unconscious right now. And when guys are hitting the ball as hard as he is, it's hard to go against them. And I prefer him from the left side. So he's going to get a righty Junis here. Could certainly see him doing more damage. And then maybe a Yomer Sanchez for 3,100 at third base. He's also a switch hitter. So that's going to do it for both these slates. Um, check for the MLB strategy show tomorrow morning. Check for the live stream. Um, if you're listening to this at night, check for the live stream tomorrow. So Thursday. Um and we will have me and Chris on the live stream. Should be a fun show. We got two decent slates. So enjoy the slates. Enjoy the light night of baseball. Maybe watch some hockey. And uh, check out Osmo's rankings. They are always the best. And he gets them out there. Check out the spotlight hitters. Check out the spotlight stacks and the spotlight pitchers, which is an article that I do. Good luck on these slates, you guys.